What comes to mind when you hear the word robot? Is it Arnold Schwarzenegger in Terminator? Or Bender from Futurama? Or maybe it's the depressed robot Marvin from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. My dad is a math professor, and my mom opened her own educational toy store. On Sundays, she would take me to the local science center, where, for me, the robot exhibits were always the highlight. There, I grew to view robots as exciting, helpful, and even friendly. But as I grew older, I realized that not everyone viewed robots the same as me. Many viewed them as job stealers, or even just soulless killers like the Terminator. Now, I'm a PhD student at Georgia Tech, where my research lies in exploring the possibilities for human-robot interactions that create new opportunities for humans and robots alike. My current project is on creating positive artist-robot relationships through graffiti art. Why art, you may ask? Art is a time-worn form of human expression and connection. And creating a robot that can render an artist's vision accurately is hard. The question I always get is, can an AI generate artwork on its own, replacing the human artist? It turns out, it's actually pretty difficult to get a robot to paint well without a human telling it what to do. For example, when we try to turn internet images into paintings, the pixel-perfect corners turned into sloppy curves. The stroke ordering was nonsensical, and the speeds and thicknesses were all wrong. Instead, we actually record our human artist spray painting, then imitate their motions on the robot. Over the past few months, we are now also learning that cooperation goes both ways. Rather than recording artist motions using an expensive motion capture setup, we've been experimenting with recording motions using an iPad instead. The problem is, artists don't draw on an iPad the same way they would paint. They'll whip the stylus across the screen or make tiny ornate details that just turn into blobs when they're painted. At first, we thought the robot needed to accommodate the artist, so we tried algorithmically correcting the motions by slowing them down or exaggerating them, but it never really worked well. Now, we are realizing it's not just the robot cooperating with the artist, our artist also needs to cooperate with the robot. An effective artist-robot team is about teaching the artist how to use the robot just as much as it is about programming the robot to follow the artist's commands. Only with cooperation can we reach a win-win scenario. So here's what we came up with. This is GT Graffiti. Here you can see that our robot consists of a module in the center that holds the spray paint can. This module is held in place by four cables attached to the four corners. So by pulling on these cables, we can move the spray paint can around. The four cables are routed through pulleys to four motors, coordinated by a central computer and commanded by a human artist. And when you put it all together, you get this robot that can spray paint graffiti art. What's great about this design is that we can build it really big. The robot in the video you just saw was about 10 feet by 8 feet. But if you want to paint the side of a building 10 times as big, just buy 10 times as much string. String is cheap. In fact, we took the exact same robot and made it three times bigger to paint this bank of windows on the Georgia Tech Library without changing a single thing except buying more string. So picture this. We have a skilled graffiti artist who wants to paint a mural on the side of a 10-story building. But it's going to be dangerous to set up a lift. It's going to be tedious to paint each grid square one at a time. And it's going to take days to actually paint. So how about instead, our artist creates a mural from the comfort of their workshop, 
and the robot spends the next week bringing it to life in the city. This robot paints graffiti, but the same technology can also be used to solve other problems. For example, we applied the same cable robot to a vertical hydroponic farm, where the spray paint can is replaced by a camera to image a wall of lettuce. Our robot constructs 4D spatiotemporal models of the plants to monitor plant health and to predict the optimal fertilizer schedule and harvest time, freeing up farmers to direct their time elsewhere. And this is just one of countless applications in agriculture, construction, and even space exploration. Just as computers went from occupying entire rooms to becoming our pocket-sized companions, robots too will almost certainly become ubiquitous. Logically, robot literacy will be just as important to the next generation as computer literacy is today. So the next time you're looking for something to do on a Sunday with your kids, your nieces, or your grandchildren, consider visiting your local science center. My childhood visits led to a lifelong love for robots. So who knows what a trip like that could lead to for them. Thank you.